So for today's lecture, this is week four. We are going to discuss on the new topic, which is uh, transformer, right? So basically, I have done uh, the recording last night, and I have already uploaded to YouTube, which is uh, part of the uh, discussion on the transformer. I think. Uh, in that YouTube video that I have recorded, I have di discussed up to example 2.1. So, that one is for the recorded video. Okay. So, now, now we just go through uh, again from topic two transformer and then i have already shared with you the lecture notes can you see the lecture notes i think you can download the lecture notes from whatsapp group right So you have the lecture notes while uh, referring to lecture slides here. You can refer to lecture notes. Suppose that I, now uh, I lost my my canvas, which is a uh, replacement of the whiteboard that I used to use during my uh, tutorial. When I recorded the tutorial video, uh, I used to uh, mirror my canvas from my tablet to my computer screen using any desk software but now it seems like any desk software cannot uh, establish connection to UMT network so I cannot connect it to my monitor All right okay so I think I, uh, we are going to start now okay Boleh, huh? can we start now Let me check the attendance first. Boleh, Doctor. Boleh, ha? Nur Fatiha, are you there? Yes, Doctor. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Where are the others? I think about 15 students already registered in this course. Hafizatul, ada? Hafizatul, are you there? Afizatu, you are using your cell phone, right? Some students using cell phone. I think uh, half of you are using cell phone. So hopefully there will be no problem at your side. Then uh, hope that the connection is quite well. Uh, but never mind. I have already recorded this session so that you can... Uh, follow it after this lecture you can follow it by visiting the uh, youtube channel so that you can view again the discussion about topic two which is transformer okay so today i'm going to talk about transformer which is the second topic out of uh, four topic overall that we have in this course so in the first topic we have been discussing about some um, introduction to rotational machinery uh, some uh, laws like faraday's law lens law which is related to electromagnetism and then we also uh, have done a bit of discussion about dc machinery and then uh, some of the tutorial questions also has been discussed and then i have already uploaded all of the tutorial uh, videos and share with you the tutorial notes so that you can study later okay so from now on we'll be moving on topic two which is transformer and transformer is also part of the machines yeah because transformer works uh, 
based on the action of the magnetic field. All right. Let me open uh, the lecture notes. Let me open the lecture notes first. So this is the lecture notes that I have shared with you. You can just refer it. I think uh, if you don't understand, just let me know. This is lecture note based on my sketch, my my writings, you know. So for a proper one, you have to write down your own lecture notes. And but, but basically, uh, the flow of this lecture note is based on the slides that I've shared with you, which is uh, Transformers slide. Okay, Transformers slide topic two. All right. So back to uh, this slide. Full screen. Okay. So these are uh, some of the out outlines of uh, the sections uh, to be discussed in topic two. Uh, we have about uh, seven sections, which is 2.1 is a bit introduction, a bit of introduction about transformer and then 2.2 types and construction of the transformer there are two types and construction of the transformer which is shell type and also the core type so we'll be discussing more about uh we'll be discussing later about types of the transformer in more details right and then the third one is ideal transformer ideal means as written in my lecture notes that I've shared with you, ideal means lossless. So we, we, we made an assumption that a transformer that we have is ideal, which is we neglect or we ignore some uh, losses occurs in the transformer, the real transformer, uh, to make sure that just for, for the purpose of calculation, right? So to calculate the quantities at the input and output of the transformer, we have to make some assumptions. So we call it as the ideal transformer. And then 2.4, uh, I'll be discussing on the theory and operation of the real single phase transformer. Now it is no longer the ideal one, but is it is this one is real real transformer that considers some of the losses. But for this one, uh, I'll be talking about a single phase transformer only. But actually, in uh, real world, we have not only single phase, but also we have two phase transformer and also three phase transformers. But in this case, for the real uh, real transformer to be discussed in uh, topic two point four is about single phase transformer. Okay, and then. The equivalent circuit of a transformer, normally for a system like transformer machines and other systems uh, like inverter, power conversion system, and so on, we represent that electrical system into the equivalent circuit, right? So equivalent circuit will be used as uh, the circuit that we are going to do calculations uh, to understand the behavior of the system, which is transformer in this case, in terms of voltage, current, power, uh, power factor, frequency, and many other electrical quantities related to transformer. Right, and 2.6, uh, the per unit system, uh, per unit system is actually the, the, the the measurement system it is used for calculation of the transformer quantities. By using the per unit system, it will be much more easier for us to understand because uh, we can use uh, we can use the quantities per unit quantities 
from the uh, primary side of the transformer to calculate the quantities at the secondary side of the transformer. So later on, we'll be uh, further explore about this. All right. So and then finally, in 2.7, I will be discussing on the transformer voltage regulation. Which is uh, actually why do ha we have to do the voltage regulation for the transformer? Okay, why do we have uh, to control the voltage? Meaning that we have to adjust the voltage to regulate the voltage of the transformer. So there'll be a purpose. Why do we have to do the regulation of the voltage of the transformer? And then transformer efficiency also will be discussed. For example, uh, in any system, uh, in any system, it, it is like a black box, black box, uh, black box with input and output. So any system, for example, in electrical system as well, when we talk about the performance of that system, we, we measure that performance in terms of efficiency, which is the uh, calculation in terms of uh, output. Uh, as compared to its input times 100%, right? So this is, this slide shows the introduction, just the introduction. Uh, in this case, uh, the first point appears here. A transformer is a device that change AC electric power at one frequency and voltage level to AC ele electric power at same frequency and another voltage level through the action of magnetic field. Some points I'd like to draw from here, from this, uh, the first point here, which is transformer only works in AC system, all right? You have to remember that transformer doesn't work in DC system, meaning that uh, if you want to use the transformer, meaning that it is under the AC environment, alternating current environment, not the DC system, right? And then another thing is transformer only convert or uh, only uh, change the voltage level. So at the input, we have some amount of voltage. We change it to another uh, to another amount of voltage from that voltage level to another voltage level. Okay. For example, for a step up transformer, what we do is to uh, change, uh, to increase, to step up uh, that particular voltage at the input, so at the output, so that we can get more voltage. Sounds like that. So, the sort of thing, transformer only works uh, to change, I mean, to step up or step down the voltage or current. Okay. When voltage change, current is also changing. But for the frequency, the power, the power doesn't change, the frequency also doesn't change. Okay? So, in the electrical, uh, uh, when we talk about electrical variables, for the transformer, we have voltage, current, power, uh, frequency, power factor, so all of these five variables, for example, only voltage and currents are changing. So transformer only change voltage and current, not the others. Okay. So how do transformers work? It is based on the action of magnetic field that we have uh, already discussed in term uh, in, in the theoretical aspects, referring to the uh, Faraday's law and also Lenz's law, right? Okay, point number two, uh, it consists of two or more coils of wire wrapped around a common ferromagnetic coil. So when we talk about a transformer, what we can imagine is the ferromagnetic core, which is the iron core. And also we have the coils. Coils, sometimes we call the coils as windings. Eh? So we have the windings of the transformer and the the ferromagnetic core, okay, the steel core, or could be some core made of cobalt or nickel, right? So that 
iron core is wrapped around with coils or of wire or the we call it as windings eh? so at least two or more coils some transformer have two coils a majority of the transformer have two coils which is the single phase transformer uh, in three phase transformer we have more than two which is up to six coils including the primary and secondary side okay primary side we have three, three sets of call and then uh, at the secondary side we have another three set of call uh, of call for the three phase transformer so for two core is single phase and then six core up to six, six core is the three phase transformer so there are some uh, questions here point third fourth and fifth here are these coils physically connected to each other what actually connect these two coils right so basically we have windings or coils that is uh wounded around the core okay but these coils is actually not connected to each other so we, we don't have connection of that wire between that coils huh? so basically this is not connected we just have the i cannot write i cannot draw because suddenly umt network doesn't allow the any desk software let me check again cannot connect any desk software cannot be connected maybe some security have already blocked it because it's like uh you know remote desktop control so sounds like security problem okay so let's move on what actually connect these two coils actually uh, there is no connect connection between that two coils uh, but we can still transfer the voltage we can still do the step up or step down the voltage because of the action of the magnetic field because of the voltage induced in the core and then what happened is based on the windings uh, at the uh, primary and secondary we can whether increase or decrease the voltage that we want and then next is how do we describe the transformer windings in terms of primary windings or secondary windings normally uh, primary windings uh, we use the notation of p right so for example voltage at the primary we we use the term vp okay and then at the secondary side we use the term vs okay all right so next why transformers are important in modern life so one of the main function of transformer is to step up and step down the voltage in power delivery system for example uh, from the power generation from the side of the generation which is far away from our uh, our I mean the residential areas we we are living in the residential areas like in Kuala Terengganu so basically we uh, we don't generate electricity at uh, here okay in Kuala Terengganu basically the generating comes from the rural areas rural areas I mean like for example we have Bakon uh, hydroelectricity generation also Kenyer, at the Kenyer Lake, we have Kenyer hydroelectric generation. And then some uh, factories, we have heavy industries in Kemaman. Also over there, there are 
some uh, generate generation of electricity by based on the gas uh, gas power station so most of the power generators most of the generation is from far away which is uh, when we want to transfer the energy from there uh, it involves the transmission lines using the transmission line which is connected uh, from here to there so to ensure that there is no loss during transfer of the energy through the transmission lines what we do is to step up the voltage so at the generation normally the voltage will be generated around 10 to 20 kilovolt but they will be the voltage will be stepped up to some amount of 400 kilovolt to transmit or to transfer it through the transmission lines up to here and then after the energy or the power reach here we will do the step down yeah so that we can further distribute to some substation around Kuala Terengganu so that is one of the main reason why we use transformer which is to step up and step down the voltage so that uh, we can avoid some losses that might be occurs during transfer of the power or energy from the uh, from the side that is far away from us all right so in next slides types and construction of the transformers i think there is a video that i will show you later which is quite good video to understand the difference between the core form transformer and also the shell form transformer and this is an example of the, the core form transformer which is wrapped the windings around the core okay the winding winding is uh you can say that the winding is surrounded uh wait so this is the construction of the core form transformer for the core type transformer winding surrounds the transformer which is windings mostly at the outside windings mostly at the outside but for the shell form core for the shell form next for the shell form shell type transformer which is this image core surrounds the winding we can see that this is core that surrounds the winding at the middle my winding at the middle and core at the outside similarly for this uh differently for this one winding outside the core uh, i think you should let me play this uh video that i've shared i'm not sharing with you guys yet uh, let me share it now Okay, so this is the video that we can watch about. Hi, I'm Dr. Amy Cohen. I have my own medical practice, and I've been using Vitor now for a few weeks. The transformer core helps to. Uh, let me pick up somebody. Nur Ain. Effectively transfer magnetic flux in the pipe. Can you see and hear the sound of the vi this video clearly? No, Ryan. Dengar boleh jeng dengar jeng lagi jelas? Tak tak jelas. Tak jelas lah. 
Tak nampak dengan jelas, tak dengar dengan jelas. Tak dengar apa-apa. Oh, dengar tapi slow. Slow, jap. I think uh, something we have to do with the sharing. Where is my... Webex pula hilang ni. Ah, Webex ada belakang ni. Uh, just wait. Uh, wait a second. Share content. Share content. Share multimedia. Okay. Uh, share content. Optimize for motion and videos. And then this one. Core construction. Transformers can be broadly classified as core and shell type. Stop sharing. In a core type transformer, the winding surrounds the core. A single phase core type transformer Share. is constructed in the following way. The construction of a three phase core type transformer is shown here. How about this one? Is it, it clear is now? That the primary and secondary windings. Can anyone respond? Fadila, is it clear? Clear, yeah, doctor. In a shell type transformer, the core surrounds the winding. Clear? Ala, is it clear? Yeah, yes, Hello, doctor, Ala? clear. Yes, doctor, clear. Okay, let me play it again. Yeah. All right. Uh, just uh, another minute. All right. The transformer core helps to effectively transfer magnetic flux in the primary winding to the secondary winding. The core is made up of thin slices of highly permeable material. In this video, we will go through different types of core construction. Trans so this is basically the video that shows the difference between the core type and also the shell type transformer, right? So we have two types to be discussed. We are, got, we are discussing in this uh, topic, which is core type and shell type. So this is the explanation video about it. Transformers can be broadly classified as core and shell type. In a core type transformer, the winding surrounds the core. So core type transformer, winding surrounds the core, all right? So this is for single phase one. A single phase core type transformer is constructed in the following way. The construction of a three phase core type transformer is shown here. It is evident that the primary and secondary windings sit on the same limb. So this is three, three phase core type transformer okay in a shell type transformer the core surrounds the winding so for shell type transformer the core which is outside of this uh, image this photo okay uh, the core surrounds the winding winding in the middle as you can see, the blue one is the uh, primary windings and the red one is the secondary windings. Huh? The construction of a three-phase shell type transformer is shown here. It is evident that the core design is more economical and easy to manufacture compared to the shell type design. But for high power rating and voltage applications, 
The shell type design is preferred because of its better short circuit strength characteristics. It also exhibits a better power to weight ratio. That's all about the transformer core types. Thank you. So basically the core type is much more practical. It's much more, I mean, uh, for low voltage uh, application, uh, shell uh, core type transformer is normally used and it is more uh, economical, okay? But for the shell type transformer, especially when we want to use it in high voltage, in power generation, normally we use shell type transformer, okay? Because it's advantageous in terms of, uh, what is it? It's advantageous in terms of, that's all about the transformer core types, Shio. For shell type That's all about the transformer core types, thank weight ratio. Characteristics. Its design is preferred uh, high because power. of its better short circuit strength. Uh, short circuit, okay. In terms of short circuit characteristic, shell type uh, transformer is much more preferred. Uh, when, when we want to use it in high voltage application, like in power generation, we use shell type transformer. But in some application, which is low power in our electrical appliance, for example, most of them are core type transformer. Right, gonna share you another, no, not another video, but uh, we will move on to continue so this illustration is basically from uh, Stephen J. Chapman's book, which is the construction of the core type transformer which should look like this. And this one is the shell type transformer construction, right? So that is another topic about transformer, which is the difference between core type transformer and shell type transformer. Now, uh, we are going to discuss a bit more about types of transformer also. But in this case, how do we name it? How do we name that uh, transformer? For example, in this case, which is discussed in the Stephen J. Chapman's book, uh there are four types of uh, transformers that are normally used in uh, application like power system application and also uh, the, the transformers that are used in most of the uh, electrical system electrical power system or electrical appliance that we have at home for example one of the transformer we call it as step up transformer okay the first one is step up transformer. As its name, the function is to step up the voltage. All right. So this transformer, uh, sometimes it is called as a unit transformer. And normally it is used at the power generator. As I mentioned earlier, at the generation side, we use the step up transformer to step up the voltage up to several hundreds of kilovolt before we transfer it over long distance all right that is the step up transformer the second one is step down so if we have step up of course we have to step down which is to lower down the voltage so step down transformer sometimes it is it is called as substation transformer which is located at main distribution or secondary level transmission substation. Okay, once uh, the power arrive at, at any substation, substation means uh, before the distribution, we have this another station, uh, which is we call it a substation. At the substation, uh, step down transformer will be used to lower down the voltage after the delivery for the distribution purpose all right uh, and then 
The third one is distribution transformer. Uh, normally, distribution transformer located at small distribution substation. Okay, this is much more smaller distribution substation as we normally see at UMT. At the entrance of UMT, we can see uh, from the gate. At the guard, uh, at the guard, uh, at the guard from the gate, we can see at the right, right our right hand side when we enter uh, UMT. At, at the right hand side, we can see there is a building which is TNB building. So that is an example of the distribution transformer. So it has distribution transformer inside that building to. Uh, Lower down the voltage up to five, four hundred, and also two hundred, two hundred thirty, and four hundred fifteen. So that 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 level of voltage can be uh, transferred to the buildings in your MT. Okay, and then number four is special purpose transformer, which is uh. When we want to do a uh, measurement of the voltage, I mean the high voltage, for example, uh, at the substation, we want to monitor the voltage level of that particular substation. So what we do is to use the potential transformer as a sensor. So this potential transformer is also called as voltage transformer, which is used as a sensor to sense the voltage. Okay, so basically, uh, PT or VT here works as a sensor for voltage. Uh, and then similarly for the current, which is we call as a current transformer or CT, which is used at the power system substation to measure, to sense the current at the substation, all right? And sometimes we also see the CT and PT in a smaller form, right? Uh, like uh, in electronics also, we, we see some current transformer and also potential transformer. I have the current transformer. So this is a sensor that I use for my final year project student. This is the current sensor, okay? So this is the current sensor with rating of up to 100 amperes, huh? 100 amperes. Uh, so this current and sensor, what we can see inside is the uh, current transformer. I think you can, I don't know whether you can see or not. So the blue, the blue one, which is inside this uh, clamp, current transformer clamp here, is the transformer. All right. So this transform current transformer is used to sense the to sense the current that passes through the wire like this. So if we clamp this. Current transformer. We can monitor the current that is flowing inside this wire. All right. So that is an example of the current transformer and also the potential transformer. It is normally used not only in the power system application, but also in uh, electronics, eh? which is part of the electrical and electronics. Uh, small electronic appliance, uh, small electric, electrical system, for example. So this is the figure that shows the power plant, which is the power distribution system from generation, transmission, and distribution. Okay, normally at the power plant, we have some types of generation. 
for example uh, hydro generation or coal fired generation gas turbine generation okay so from that generation only generates about for example 12 kilovolt right so what we are going to do to further transfer this low voltage uh, power over long distance, uh, over long distance that's passed through some mountains and also some rural area, areas, right? So what we have to do is to step up this voltage level from 12 kilovolt to 400 kilovolt to make sure that uh, we can minimize the losses uh, during transfer or uh, during delivery of that power. So basically from 12 kilovolt, we step, it, step up uh, the voltage up to 400 kilovolt to transfer over long distance using the transmission lines here. And then after we reach at a particular uh, transmission substation, we can use the step down transformer. Okay, So we use this step, step down transformer to lower down the voltage again uh, to 13 kilovolt. Okay. Let's say if we don't have uh, this transformer, let's say imagine that we want to deliver this 12 kilovolt directly to uh, our transmission substation here in Kuala Terengganu. So at Kuala Terengganu, maybe we will receive around less than 12 kilovolt of voltage. It couldn't be 13 kilovolt because some of the power uh, will loss. Huh? Some of the power loss occurs. So that is why we need the transformer to firstly step up the voltage up to high level, up to few hundreds of kilovolt and transfer it over long distance using transmission lines. And then when it arrives, the transmission substation and then over there at the transmission substation, we have another type of transformer, which is step down transformer to lower down the voltage to 13 kilovolt so that it can be transferred using the smaller poles here. So these poles will transfer lower voltage, which is around 13 kilovolt. Up to here, we have another transformer, which is another step down transformer. Uh, transformer which is located at the top of the pole uh, of electric pole to further step down the voltage from 13 kilovolt to 240 volt all right so basically our house uh, some uh, buildings most of the buildings in umt for example use 230 or 240 volt Okay, from our socket plug, huh? from our plug socket like this, I don't, I don't think you can see this. From the plug socket at your side, normally we use 230 or 240 volt. Right? Uh, let me show some of the example of... Uh, Example figure of the transformer. Optimize for text and images. Share screen. So these are some of the image. Can you see this? Can somebody respond? Boleh, Doctor. Boleh, huh? Sebab just now, in different setting, it was motion-based, uh, video-based setting. So I have changed the setting now. Uh, so this is, these are some of the transformers, which is distribution transformer. If we, we Google the distribution transformer, what we can see here, uh, some types of transformers. Some of the transformers, which is this one, is a three-phase transformer that is located in between of two poles. Huh? Two poles, dual poles, two poles, which is in the middle we have the distribution transformer. 
and there is another voltage at a single pole. This is a, a wood pole timber, eh? timber pole. Uh, we have another uh, three phase distribution transformer. Normally in Australia, in Australia they use not concrete pole but uh, the pole that is made of wood ataupun timber. Eh? So some another other images of distribution transformer. This one is also located uh, at the top of the pole, right? Also this one, so there are some of the examples of uh, distribution transformer that we can Google. Sometimes if you Google substation transformer, let me see. So for substation transformer, it should look like this, which is much more bigger in terms of size. So these are the images of substation transformer. As you can see for this one, a bigger size of transformer at the side of the bus bars at the substation, right? Also for this one, there are two people over there. And at the back, we can see uh, a lorry size, big transformer. The burning transformer is also there. All right. So, okay. Let me share again my screen. Okay. So, that was about a uh, power transformer that is normally used in power distribution system. Okay. In power distribution system, transformers play their main role for stepping up and stepping down the voltage. And then, uh, this is another video. I, I think this video is about 8 minutes. Uh, let me share it again. Good grammar and uh, let me share this essays video. That messages that forge brighter connections. And Optimize that for done. motion and videos. Think about more than just grammar and uh, well, this uh, sentence is grammatically correct, but it's wordy and hard to read. It undermines the writer's message and the word choice is bland. Grammarly's cutting edge technology helps you craft compelling. The working principle. All right, uh, share screen, not, not screen, got Google Chrome. So I think. Full of transformer. Actually, transformer. The working. Uh, if there is problem with this video, please let me know. Eh? Principle of transformer. The working Actually, principle of a transformer. transformer is a machine, but it does not have any moving part. That is why a transformer is referred to as a static machine. A transformer has three main parts. And a metallic core on which the windings are wound. Windings are in the form of coil made of a good conductor of current. The windings of a transformer play a main role in the machine. The winding coils behave as an inductor. When an so winding is actually is like an inductor. So in, in one of the electro electronics component is inductor, right? To store the energy. Okay, because the action of the magnetic field, we can store the energy through this 
inductor. So in transformer, we call it as windings. Huh? An alternating current is allowed to flow through any of the windings. There will be an alternating flux produced surrounding the winding. The magnitude of this flux is proportional to the magnitude of the current flowing through the winding. The direction of the flux is according to the direction of current. The direction of the current in the winding can be found out by applying right hand grip rule. This rule states that when we grip our right hand with stretching the thumb along the axis of coil or winding and other four fingers along the direction of current in the coil, then the thumb indicates the direction of produced flux inside the coil along the axis. This flux becomes maximum in magnitude when current reaches its maxima for one half cycle of the alternating current wave. The flux becomes zero when current in the coil crosses zero axis. Again, for next half cycle, the flux becomes maximum but in opposite direction when current reaches to its reverse maxima. In this way, alternating current produces continually varying flux surrounding the winding. The flux lines link the winding itself and the flux is varying so there will be self-induced EMF across the winding. This phenomenon is due to Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. This induced EMF or voltage, whatever you say, is same in magnitude and opposite in polarity of supply voltage. Supplied alternating voltage causes alternating current in the winding, which produces continually varying flux inside and outside the winding. This continually varying flux produces induced EMF across the winding. So we can say that the supply voltage is caused. An induced voltage in the winding is an effect of this cause. Hence, according to Lenz's law, this induced voltage will be in opposite polarity of supply voltage. Since, according to Lenz's law, effect always opposes cause. This self-induced voltage across the winding does not depend upon the number of turns in the winding, but depends on the supply voltage. But the voltage induced per turn depends on the number of turns in the winding. This is nothing but induced EMF divided by the number of turns in the winding. We have said that there is another winding in the most basic transformer, but till now we have not discussed it. Now we are coming to second winding in the transformer. Supposing one separate winding is brought nearer to the first winding, then this second winding gets kinked with a portion of varying flux of first winding. Due to this varying flux linkage, there will also be an induced EMF across it. This induced EMF would be quite small, as because the flux linkages is small. Hence, rate of change of flux linkage is also small, and according to Faraday's laws, induced EMF across a coil is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. If now we connect a closed circuit across the second winding, we will get a very tiny current through the circuit, provided the second winding is placed much nearer to the first. So we have seen that some portion of the input power is transformed to output through the second winding. This is because some portion of generated flux of first winding is linked with second. Now, if we want to transform maximum electric power from first winding to second winding, we have to link maximum flux of first winding to second winding. This is done by placing a low reluctant magnetic core in between these windings. Steel is a well-known low reluctant magnetic material, so we normally use steel for making low reluctant magnetic core in the transformer. As soon as we place a steel core in between these windings, 
nearly the entire flux which was surrounding the first winding will be concentrated inside the core and leach with the second winding. As nearly the same flux links with second winding, now the rate of change of flux with respect to time is equal in both windings. Since, as per Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, induced EMF across a conductor is directly proportional to the rate of change of flux linkage. The voltage induced per turn in both windings will be the same. We have already explained that voltage induced across the first winding is the same as the supply voltage. Actually, here we consider that there is no voltage drop between supply terminals and the first winding. This is an ideal case. For theoretical purposes, we will consider that condition. As this first winding is connected with supply, it is referred to as primary winding. Now, if this primary winding has n one number of turns and supply voltage or induced voltage across primary winding is V1, that voltage per turn in the primary winding is V1 by N1. So far, we have understood that exactly this V1 by N1 voltage will appear across each turn of second winding. So if this second winding has N2 number of turns, then total voltage across the second winding is N2 into V1 by N1, and let us say this is V2. If now any closed circuit is connected across the second winding, it will provide voltage V2 across the circuit. Voltage, there will be current flowing through the circuit. Normally in a transformer, the second winding is connected with load circuit. This winding is referred to as secondary winding. If the number of turns of secondary winding is not equal to that of primary winding, that is, if N2 is not equal to N1, then secondary voltage of the transformer is different from primary voltage. Now, if N2 is greater than N1, the secondary voltage will be more than primary voltage. On the other hand, if N2 is less than N1, the secondary voltage is less than the primary voltage. The former is called a step-up transformer and the latter is called a step-down transformer. This is the most basic theory of a transformer. Hope you understand. Okay. Hi. Hi. Okay, hope you understand the huh? basic theory of the transformer. Alright, so uh, if you lost this video, you cannot follow it during this live session. You can just copy and paste. I think I don't have to teach you. you just uh, let me stop sharing this first. Share. Optimize text and image. Share screen. So if you missed the video just now, you can just copy and paste this YouTube uh, link here that I've shared with you in this uh, slides, right? So the next one is about the ideal transformer, all right? So why do we call it ideal? Okay, why do we call it ideal? Ideal means lossless meaning that we don't consider some of the losses that occurs in this transformer. Before this, we have learned about some of the losses. For example, the eddy current losses and also the hysteresis losses. But in this case, that sort of losses is not, uh, not considered. Uh, and we assume that this core is uh, perfect. Eh? This core is perfect, which is lossless so that we can further calculate the amount the amounts of uh, the quantities at the primary side and also the secondary side this is the representation of the lossless transformer device we have the rectangular core here okay in this figure 
and the windings at the, the one of the side which is uh, we supply it this winding with current IP and the number of turns for this winding is NP P stands for the primary lah. so this is the primary side of the transformer and then uh, across this point which is across this uh, number of turns or windings we supply the voltage of VP so we have the VP voltage IP current and also NP the number of turns of these windings at the primary side so what happened is when we do the windings here at one of the side what happened is the voltage will be induced so that the flux huh? the flux will be flowing through this core up to the other side which is up to the uh, secondary sides here so we have the secondary side which is with the uh, ns number of turns and voltage will be induced eh? voltage will be induced which is vs eh? vs at the secondary side and once the voltage will be induced once the voltage is induced when we connect some uh, resistor or some loads here what happen is current will be flowing to that side through that uh, resistor or loads okay so this is the schematic representation of uh, i think this one is the figure figure based representation of the lossless device of a transformer which is what we call as the ideal transformer representation right and the and at the bottom here we can see the ideal transformer sketch and also schematic symbols for the ideal transformer sketch we can see there are two lines the two vertical lines here that represents the core of the transformer and we can see the dot convention also used in this figure similarly for the schematic symbols over here uh, the different one of the different thing about this schematic symbol as compared to the symbol of the ideal transformer sketch is there is no uh, vertical lines that represent the core in the middle of these schematic symbols All right so this is the calculation that involved in the ideal transformer okay so because i cannot i cannot share my canvas so i couldn't write i think if i write on the whiteboard or the canvas the white canvas from my tablet i think you can see it much more clearer but i will uh, have a check on this problem and then uh, i will try to solve it later hopefully in our next appointment in your next session i can just uh, solve this problem and write it on my canvas so that you can see from there so So I just continue and brief about uh, this equation. Okay, for example, uh, we can use the number of turns, which is A. A is the number of turns, which is the ratio of the uh, turns at the uh, let me show side by side. I'm Dr. Amy Kellen. I have my. Uh, this one. Uh, this is my lecture notes. This. Okay. So I have my lecture notes at the left hand side and my, sorry, I have my lecture notes at this side and then uh, the slides at the other side, all right? So as you can see, you can also refer the lecture notes that, uh, that I have posted in the, web, uh, the WhatsApp group. Uh, 
so we have already arrived to the ideal transformer. So this is the representation of the ideal transformer in terms of symbol. So as you can see, uh, I redraw it like this. And then uh, to consider the calculation about lossless transformer, okay, or ideal transformer, uh, we have to con consider some uh, variables here. For example, VP is voltage, eh? is the voltage at the primary side of the transformer. And then VS, VS is uh, the voltage at the secondary side. A is the turns ratio, eh? which is uh, A is turns ratio. All right. And NP is number of turns at the primary side. And S represents the number of turns at the secondary side. And then IP represents the current at the primary side. And also IS represents the current at the secondary side. So the notation is here is simple. P represents the primary side. S represents the secondary side. So how about the voltage ratio? So for the voltage ratio, uh, it is actually the turns ratio. Okay, so we can compute the turns ratio A by using voltage ratio and also turns ratio. So we can compute A, which is turns ratio, by using VP divided by VS or NP divided by NS. Okay, and then uh, we know that uh, the MMF, MMF or F, eh? F equals to Ni, right? So in this case, the MMF induced at the primary side is uh, the same as the MMF that will be induced at the secondary side. So we can further uh, write the equation into NP times IP equals to NS times IS here. And then rearrange this equation. So NP divided by NS equals to IS divided by IP. As you can see, uh, for current, it is different to the voltage. For voltage, it is directly proportional. Huh? So NP divided by NS for the voltage is VP divided by VS. But for the current, NP divided by NS equals to IS divided by IP, which is inversely proportional. That is why for uh, if we want to find the turns ratio A by using current, okay, we use uh, IP over IS equals to 1 over A. Or else we use IS over IP equals to A. Okay, so current is inversely proportional in this case. So in terms of power, in terms of power, uh, there is no change of power from primary side to the secondary side. Uh, so uh, if voltage increase, automatically uh, current will be decreased. Okay, that sort of thing. So because power is re power will remain the same. When uh, voltage increase, uh, of course, uh, automatically current will be decreased to make sure is the power transfer is always the same. Meaning that if we, uh, at the input or at the primary power is P1, at the output P2 is equals to P1. Meaning that the output power is the same as the input power. And the next slide is about the ideal transformer. As you can see here, uh, the ideal transformer, we normally use the dot convention. The, uh, so next slide is about the dot convention of the ideal transformer. Okay, so we use this dot notation, as you can see in the bottom figure. Uh, dot is used to represent the direction of the voltage and current. 
Okay, for this schematic diagram, as you can see, uh, note number one, if the primary voltage is positive at the dotted end of the winding with respect to the undotted end, then the secondary voltage will be positive at the dotted end also. Okay, so voltage polarities. So if uh, we have the dotted end of this winding, the primary winding, the dotted end is over here, meaning that uh, the, this, this line is the positive polarity of the voltage. So the other side, which has no dotted end, meaning that the other side is negative polarity. Similarly, for the secondary part, secondary windings, the dotted end represents positive polarity of the voltage. The undotted, no dot end at the bottom here represents the negative polarity of the voltage. So it's easy, right? But for the current, okay, the dotted end represents where the current arrow is, 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 is directed toward the dot end. For example, we have the dotted end here meaning that the current is flowing to that dot end all right but for the primary uh, for the secondary side the current is flowing out of the dot, dot end so we have this dot dot here so current is actually flowing uh, away from this dot all right and i have given some another some other examples I have given some other examples here. Let's say this is normal, okay? Uh, both, both dots are located at the top of these uh, two windings, okay? So in this case, this is very similar to the case of the schematic in our slides. And the second image here, as you can see, uh, the dot in at the secondary side is at the bottom all right so what we can write here for voltage at the primary side voltage is uh, polarity plus is at the top minus at the bottom for the voltage so current will be flowing uh, which is to clockwise direction right clockwise direction but but for the uh, secondary side as you can see in this figure for prime uh, secondary side of the coil or windings here the dotted end and the dot convention is uh, at the bottom of this winding meaning that we can draw the flow of current counterclockwise direction so now the flow of, of current is counterclockwise direction which is away from this dot so at the bottom, current flow away from this dot. Similarly, for the voltage, as this dot N is at the bottom, the positive polarity is also at the bottom of the schematic diagram image. Right? And some other examples, uh, the page has been separated here because it has been converted into the PDF once converted suddenly the page is also separated here yeah. so this is the disadvantage of using uh, samsung notes for sketching this okay no problem all right um so as you can see in this image the dotted end for the left hand side which is the primary side dot is at the bottom Okay, so we can sketch, we can estimate the flow of current from bottom to the top, which is a counterclockwise direction. And then for the voltage, so since the bottom is dot, dot is at the bottom, so plus polarity of that voltage at the primary side here is bottom. Then for the secondary side is it is uh, different which is dot n is now at the at the top so we can estimate the flow of current 
which is clockwise direction. Similarly, for the voltage, the dot N represent plus polarity or positive uh, voltage side, right? And then the final figure here, another example, which is dotted N at the bottom. For both of the windings, primary and secondary, meaning that uh, for the case of voltage is plus polarity at from the bottom. So plus polarity at the bottom because both dotted are at the bottom of this image. Okay. And for the current, similarly, uh, on the left hand side, which is the primary side, uh, current is flowing to the dot n so that in this case the flow of current is counterclockwise and on the other hand for the secondary side the flow of current is uh, is also counterclockwise direction the same as the direction of the primary side counterclockwise direction because the current must be flowing out of the dotted end of the secondary side. Okay. So we have a few more minutes to go. I think I would like to finish up to impedance here. So I hope we can finish before example 2.1. Right? Next is about power in ideal transformer. Uh, so before that, we have been discussing on the voltage, uh, on the voltage and current relationship with respect to the number of turns or A, eh, turns ratio. Now, how about power? How do we how do we derive the power in terms of uh, turns ratio in this case? So this is the power relationship between the primary side of the transformer and also the secondary side of the transformer. So as you can see, the trans transformer used the AC system, the air alternating current, alternating voltage system, so that uh sometimes voltage and current is not in phase meaning that uh in rotational system or in sinusoidal uh, waveform sometimes current and uh voltage is not in phase not in the same phase so meaning that uh in when we redraw this phase diagram of voltage and power uh, sorry voltage and current we have the theta p that represents the phase angle, which is the phase angle between VP and also IP. So theta p is the phase angle uh, between theta p between VP and IP. If this phase angle is equal to zero, meaning that VP is in phase in uh, in the same phase. To the IP. Okay. I think you have to imagine with with the I didn't write it here. If I can sketch or I can draw now, I can I can show you. But so if theta is zero, meaning that VP is in phase. Sama fasa dengan IP, the same phase with IP. All right. Similarly, at the secondary side, uh, VS is VS and IS is separated by theta, which is phase. Eh? So theta S is the phase angle between VS and IS. All right. So by using that phase angle, we can calculate power, okay? Because we can use this phase angle to calculate the power factor. 
actually uh, theta theta p and theta s is used to calculate the power factor which is cosine theta p for primary and for secondary is cosine theta s so this part is actually the power factor so now when we calculate the power which is p in we we calculate it p in equals to v p i p cosine theta p that is the power at the primary side and then similarly for the equation of the power at the secondary side which is p out in this case is i s uh, this is not i s this is v s actually so please correct your notes over there so this is v s i s cosine theta s okay So in this case, okay, we know that uh, in transformer, there is no change in power factor. Huh? There is no change in voltage and current angle. Meaning that uh, if uh, at the primary side, the current angle is theta P, at the secondary side, theta S, actually theta P and theta S is the same. So no change in angle because uh, there is no change in frequency. Okay, so no change in frequency meaning that uh, the angle between voltage and current at the primary is also the same as the angle at the secondary side. And then next is to prove. Uh, we have moved to this slide. Okay, next is the proof of uh, p in equals to p out. So we can do some proof here by using the turns ratio. We use the turns ratio to further calculate, further expand this uh, equation. For example, we use the P out, which is equals to Vs Is cosine theta S. Then we use the turns ratio A in terms of Vp and Vs, also A in terms of Is and Ip. Okay. Then we get, uh, we rearrange the equation. We get IS and also VS as a function of VP and A, and also IP and A. So we just uh, substitute this IS value. IS equals to AIP, substitute here. And then VP over A, substitute in VS. Then uh, we get uh this equation where in this case we can just cancel a because a divided by a is one is unity so we just can cancel a what left is p out equals to vp ip cosine theta s as mentioned earlier theta s is the same as theta p which is no sh no change in uh, phase angle between voltage and current then uh, this cosine theta s is also equals to cosine theta p. Okay, so at the end, we know that uh, when we further uh, uh, calculate the p out, actually we can prove that p out is the same as uh, p in. Okay, so we have already finished on the calculation of the power voltage current uh, we respect to the uh, angle oh, sorry we respect to the a which is the turns ratio huh? power voltage and current in terms of turns ratio now how about impedance okay how about impedance we have the impedance scaling in this case so what is impedance scaling which is we want to estimate the impedance at the primary side if we connect the secondary side with load. Let's say if I connect uh, ZL, which is the load impedance here at the secondary side. So there must be current flowing inside the ZL, which is IL. And then the voltage across ZL is VL. So we can get ZL is VL divided by IL by using uh, uh, the law of uh, 
voltage and current law with respect to the impedance, right? All right. So this image again uh, has been separated by the page. Uh, okay. As you can see, we connect ZL across the second winding, across the primary winding. Sorry, across the secondary windings of the transformer. Then we can say that uh, ZL is VL divided by IL. So if we redraw this in terms of schematic, uh, we can redraw it like this, which is uh, we connect ZL across VS and IS, similar. So now we can uh, say that ZL equation is now VS over IS. All right. This is the secondary part of the transformer. How about impedance at the primary part? Meaning that uh, we, want, we want to do the scaling, okay? The impedance scaling in this case. Let's say we name the impedance at the primary part as ZL prime, yeah? We name it as ZL prime, which is the impedance, uh, which is apparent impedance, eh? apparent primary impedance at primary circuit. So similarly, we can draw the schematic for ZL prime. Uh, it will be like this, which is ZL prime is across the VP, voltage at the primary, and also the current that is flowing through this uh, coil, this winding, which is IP. So we can uh, write this ZL prime equation as VP divided by IP. Again, so we have the relationship of ZL prime and also ZL in which ZL is at the secondary part, eh? right? Which is the uh, secondary windings. ZL prime is the uh, impedance at the primary windings. So we have these two equations. How do we relate these two equations with respect to the turns ratio A? Okay. Again, in this case, we can use the turns ratio A relationship to voltage and current. So uh, we use a relationship of A with respect to voltage and current. For example, VP over VS is A, right? And IS over IP is A. Further rearrange this equation like before, we get VP is AVS. And then similarly for uh, I, I equation, IP equals to IS over A. Lah. Then what we do is we further substitute in ZL prime equation. Then uh, in this case, uh, as I have given the notes to you all uh, here, we, ZL prime is VP divided by IP. Then we substitute VP which is AVS, and also uh, denominator, uh, substitute <coughs> IP with IS over A. So, so now A is square. So A square VS over IS, ZL. So VS over IS. So meaning that in this case, VS over IS is actually this one, ZL. So Vs over Is is ZL. So we can just substitute ZL here. Meaning that finally, we get ZL prime is actually A square ZL. So that is the relationship of the impedance. Huh? <clears throat> we use the impedance scaling method to get the relationship between uh, the impedance at the primary side with the impedance at the secondary side. So for the impedance, we use different notation, which is L huh? here. In this case, we use L as the, for example, ZL represent the impedance at the secondary side. ZL prime is the impedance at the primary side. 
So please make sure that uh, you do not confuse with this notation usage, eh? because we use normally we use prime at the secondary side, right? But in this case, prime Z L prime is primary side. Okay, <clears throat> so the notes finish up to this 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 page. I think I I'm going to stop now because I have to find some water. Okay, so far uh, there are a few things happen which is I cannot connect to any desk and cannot sketch, cannot draw uh, while showing. Uh, for example, in terms of equation, suppose I should draw it and write on my canvas so that you can see it clearly. But uh, since we have the technical problem and I'm going to solve it maybe next week uh, until we meet again uh, in Rabu, in Wednesday. So I will make sure that all the thing is uh, solved. So that we can discuss uh, the next, uh, we can discuss this example 2.1. I think it's quite important also this calculation to show you guys on to, to solve this uh, problem. Okay. So, and then after that, maybe next week, we will be discussing on the theory and operation of real single phase transformer. If I have time before the meeting, I will make sure that I can record some of the slides, some of the teaching slides here, and then upload it to my uh, Facebook, uh, sorry, to my YouTube channel so that you can always view it at any time you like to. And hopefully before you get into the uh, live session, you can uh, go to the channel, the YouTube channel to look, uh, to view some uh, recorded live or some uh, recorded video that I've up uploaded, especially in the tutorial part. And I'll share, I, also, I have also shared my notes with you to make it uh, easier for you to study at home and also okay uh, so I will stop now I need to find some water or coffee okay so until we'll meet again on Wednesday 2 p.m. right and then remember I will release the first uh, quiz within this week then we'll announce in your whatsapp group lah. All right. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you. Ada orang tak ni? Thank you, Roger. Thank you, Roger. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. okay, sama. Satu, dua, tiga, empat, lima, enam, tujuh, lapan, sembilan. Ya. Yeah. Dekat notes yang doktor kasi tu, TR tu stand for transformer ke? Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. TR tu transformer. Saya okay. guna for short form. Okay, thank you doktor. Izzah dah boleh masuk eh? Ah, uh, Dah, Izzah. Uh, pukul 8.40 tadi. Baru lain okey. Uh, tak apa, dah record lah. Ah, uh, dah. Okay. Tadi kau join je doktor? Ha? Huh? Tadi saya join je guna phone. Nama habis satu tu. Nama lain? Ah, uh. tahu tahu. Okay, okay. Thank you, Dr. Okay, sama. Salam. Thank you.